It's said that children are more sensitive to the supernatural, and there are surveys and statistics to back up that children report more paranormal experiences, or adults report having experiences as a child. Now, whether that's due to an openness to things that we are told aren't real as we grow older, psychic abilities that fade over time, vivid imaginations, pareidolia, or false memories, we can't yet say for sure. Children have more paranormal experiences. We know this. We just don't know why. Tonight, we are going to read stories of strange first-hand experiences that were had as a child. These come from a couple of different internet sources, and in between the stories, we'll read interesting comments that contain additional stories and provoke some food for thought. And there's a lot to chew on with this subject. Now, just like with any of the stories we read, really, I can't say for sure if these are genuine paranormal experiences or not. Not only because most of them come from Reddit, joking, kind of, but because there are other factors that come into play when recalling experiences from childhood. Let me be clear, I am not intending to invalidate anyone's experiences. I'm really quite against that. But for the sake of speculation, critical thinking, and discussion, I will introduce some theories and potential explanations as we go along, because I find it interesting to chew all these ideas and possibilities over, and I think it's all worth considering. I have had my own paranormal experiences, plenty of them, and while over time I have had my doubts here and there about the legitimacy of what actually happened over time, I can't deny them really feeling genuine at the time and lasting in my memory, but we'll touch on memory in a little bit as well. Anyway, let's get into some of these stories, shall we? First, I'm going to read a story from the Paranormal subreddit. This was submitted by PC Grinch in 2020. When I was about four or five, I remember waking up to somebody talking to me, but of course, no one was there. I kept hearing a little voice that said, Hi, hello, good morning, how are you? I tried finding the source of the sound, and according to my memory, it was coming from a plush lobster that I put in my closet. I noticed it was moving on its own, and I think trying to wave. As nice as the little lobster was, I was terrified and ran out of my room to tell my mom. She told me the sound had to be the hamster running on the wheel, except the hamster was all the way downstairs, and I'm pretty sure what I heard was someone talking. The lobster wasn't mechanical in any way. It was simply a plush lobster with a hole for puppeteering, and that was it. No voice box, no nothing. Although I did have electronic toys at the time, I'm positive none of them said anything that I heard that morning. Man, that reminds me of the Furby I had as a kid. It would just randomly talk in my closet. I thought it was really creepy and annoying at the time, but I want another one now. <laughs> I miss my Furby. That story was okay, nothing too, too special. I was really more interested in the stories shared in the comments, which all have to do with dolls. Ghost of a Mermaid said, My grandma got this huge rag doll from a friend and let me have it. The doll had a drawn-on face, no plastic eyes or lips. It sat on my shelf, and early one morning, I woke up and looked at it, and its eyes were moving, specifically its eyebrows, like they were wiggling at me. I was so scared I told her I would cuddle with her if she stopped. I told my mom the next day, and the doll was donated. I'm pretty certain it was my mind making up stuff, and my mom said it could be a fever dream, but I remember not being sick at the time. And we did have other experiences in that house. So my best friend growing up shared a bedroom with one of her sisters, and they had bunk beds. I'd sleep over a lot and I'd share the top bunk with my friend. They had this little ledge or shelf that ran all the way around the room, pretty high up, not too far from the ceiling, and lining the shelf were porcelain dolls. Apparently, it was a tradition that their grandmother bought each girl in the family one of these 
fancy little porcelain dolls for each of their birthdays. And I was probably 12 or so at the time. So between my friend and her little sister, there were probably around 20 dolls lining this room, gazing down at you with their blank eyes from this high shelf. However, sleeping in the top bunk puts you at about eye level with them. I remember one night, my friend and her sister and I were all in bed, lights off, but not yet asleep, just talking. And one of them, I can't remember which one, if it was my friend or her sister, but one of them remarked how sometimes they would see the dolls blink their eyes as they sit up there on their shelf. I'm pretty sure I stopped making eye contact with the dolls after that. Another comment on this thread from the Real Mexicat says, My sister was very young and telling a story to her doll. She was really into it until she stopped for some reason. A weird hollow voice came out of the doll. Y luego? Or, and then? Sis never played with that doll again. Mom threw it away. Now that's creepy. Of course, a lot of people are afraid, or at least creeped out, by dolls. I think it's a combination of their lifelike features and fixed faces. It's like an uncanny valley thing. Human brains are very perturbed when we can't read another human's facial expression. Anyway, for the next story, let's jump on over to your ghost stories. This was submitted by Farm Frau from Canada, and it's called Weird Childhood Experience. This happened to me when I was about eight years old. When I was little, I had a blanket that I'd had since I was a baby that I always slept with. One night, I'd gone to bed as usual and fallen asleep. I woke in the middle of the night. I don't know why. Usually, I sleep like a log. The foot of my bed faced my closed bedroom door. As I looked at the back of the door, two spots of light appeared on it, about five feet up from the floor. They seemed to be swirling in circles, a sort of greenish-gray light with sparkly bits in it. Sort of like an old-fashioned TV when the cable was out, that snow you'd get when that happened. As I watched, these two balls of light popped off the door and became these small creatures, about two feet high. They glowed greenish with sort of barrel-shaped bodies, no necks and short arms and legs. I don't think their mouths moved, but they seemed to be communicating to each other. I could hear some squeaky little sounds coming from them. One of them walked to the end of my bed. I sat there frozen. I was so scared I couldn't move. The creature started to tug on the bedspread, pulling itself up onto the end of the bed. I was clutching on one end of my baby blanket. This thing started tugging on the other end. We had a short tug of war, and I felt my arms go rubbery, and I let go my grip on the blanket. The creature took it, climbed back down to the floor. Then the two of them popped back up on the door, becoming the circles of swirling light again, this time with my blanket spread out in a square against the door behind them. They swirled around for a few seconds, and then everything seemed to suck through the door, just disappeared. I could suddenly move again and dove under my covers, heart pounding and shaking like a leaf. I stayed like that for a long time, and eventually must have fallen asleep. The next morning I had forgotten all about it. I had breakfast, went up to get dressed, and my mom told me to make my bed. That's when I remembered the blanket, and the weird thing that, by this time, I figured was a very intense dream. I looked for the baby blanket. I couldn't find it. I tore the bed apart, looked between all the other sheets, looked under my bed, my closet, and the laundry basket. I asked my mom if she took it to wash. She said no. I asked my brothers if they took it, and they both said something helpful like, no, I didn't take your stupid blanket. I started looking around the house. I couldn't find it anywhere. I went down to the basement, and there it was, hanging in the middle of the room from the ceiling, from the floor joists of the living room above. It wasn't attached with anything, just one edge of it stuck to the side of one of the beams and hanging down like a flag, like they wanted me to find it. I told my dad, who didn't believe me. Never told anyone else until just a couple of years ago. I'm nearing 50 and remember it vividly. I swear this actually happened. That's a fun one, isn't it? Although. Naturally, I'm sure it was terrifying for the person who experienced it. 
I can imagine Freud or someone saying that it was a symbolic hallucination or dream communicating the subconscious awareness of needing to ditch their baby blanket. They of course state that they felt they were awake during the experience, although it's easy for someone outside of the experience to presume that this was just a strange dream. False awakening is a sleep disturbance in which you have a very convincing dream that you've actually woken up, but you haven't. I used to have these all the time when I was in high school. My mom would tell me to get up to get ready for school, so I would. I'd wake up and start getting dressed, then I'd hear her calling out for me again, but much more irritated to wake up. I'd groan back that I am awake, but after doing so, would find that I was actually still in bed, and me previously getting ready for school was just a dream. Apparently, strange lights are commonly reported in false awakenings. Here's what psychologist Susan Blackmore has to say on the subject. Eerie lighting is common in another kind of sleep disturbance, the false awakening, in which you dream you have woken up. Although you are convinced you are awake, things don't look quite right, and familiar objects can seem lit from within. In this state, anything is possible because you are still dreaming, but the apparent familiarity of the environment means that the experiences are more likely to be interpreted as real. A lot of paranormal experiences take place just upon waking while you're in your bed. I'm going to dedicate a video one day to weird things kids see in beds and expand on this topic in particular because I had my own weird experiences with that and upon seeking out other stories I found a lot of interesting ones. In the Fairy Census, a document I talk about quite often and make videos reading stories from, the majority of people who reported their first-hand fairy sightings said that they had just woken up or were about to fall asleep when they had their experience, 34%. In Simon Young's essay, Children Who See Fairies, he says, Nighttime is traditionally associated with the supernatural and sleep, and associated mental states favor supernatural encounters, including hypnagogic visions, sleep paralysis, and dreams later reinterpreted as memories. Humans, it should be noted, often have dreams of supernatural beings, and children aged 4 to 12 seem particularly prone to this. Also, the majority of fairy sightings reported to the fairy census were when the witnesses were under 10 years old. Speaking of fairies, these little goblin-like creatures in that story did seem to me to be of a fey nature, right down to stealing and hiding their blanket. That's another detail to the story that should be considered. Regardless of whether the author of the story was dreaming when they saw these goblins, the experience carries over into the next day when they can't find their precious blanket, something they would have made sure they went to bed with and then they find it in a very strange place and seemingly an unreachable place for someone of their age. Again, I introduce all these sleep theories and data just for the sake of discussion. I'm definitely not trying to take away from their experience or anyone's experience, which I personally found this story to be fascinating and a really, really good story. I'm really glad that they decided to share it all these years later. Let's move on to the next story now and we're bouncing back to the paranormal subreddit. This story was posted in 2023. I don't remember exactly how old I was at the time, but I was still in kindergarten. When my dad picked me up, we often used to stop by in a park on the way home. For a little context, my dad was, and is, a great man, and when I was little, around that same time, he used to make maps for treasures for me, and he would actually hide some real treasures around the park so that I could find them. Back to the story. We were in the park as usual, and while we were walking, there was a sewer hole from which were coming waves of steam. We were heading towards it, and I remember my dad saying, Look, maybe here is where Santa prepares the gifts for the good children. I laughed a little because around that time, I already knew Santa wasn't real. Then, as we passed by the hole, I looked through the holes of the covering, and I saw a man wearing a weird, triangle-shaped hat. Everything happened very fast, and I could only barely see through the holes and all the steam. But the man was sitting at a table, and it looked as if he was writing something. When I saw him, I remember freezing for a little moment, and there were many things going on through my little head. 
I thought either that this was a real elf and my dad was telling the truth, or maybe it was a man hired by him for me to see, just like he had hid all the treasures. Anyway, I didn't tell him anything and he didn't say anything either. When we arrived home, I remember telling my grandma that I saw a Christmas elf in the park and she laughed and said, that's great, or something along those lines. I knew she didn't believe me. My dad was also laughing. The following days, I kept thinking about it, but with time, I just went on with the idea that my dad told some man to dress up as an elf and jump in the sewer for me to see to make me believe in the magic of Christmas. Well, a few years later, I finally asked him about it, and he said that he never did this, and asked me more about what I saw. I told him, and he said it was probably just my wild imagination and being little. However, I know exactly what I saw, and I can remember it clearly to this day. I even went to the same exact park since then to inspect the area, but a lot has changed since then, and that place looks totally different now. No walking path and no sewer hole, just plain grass. What's even weirder is that as years went by, whenever I remember that man, I start comparing him more and more with myself. I only saw him briefly and from behind, but I could see his hair and the color and type was just like mine. But this might just be me overthinking it throughout time. Anyway, this is my little story and whether you believe it or not, it's the second strangest thing that has ever happened to me. Now, a lot of the statistics we have for paranormal experiences had in childhood are collected in adulthood. And the majority of retellings we hear of childhood experiences come from adults. The person in this story admits that they may have embellished or distorted memories over time. And I think that's a fair speculation. If you've had a supernatural experience as a child, you may have a very clear memory of that event. I've even gone back and forth with doubting my own paranormal experiences. And like I said, I'm not taking away from anyone's experience or attempting to make you doubt or question your own memory. But the human brain is known to fill in the blanks when it comes to all kinds of different information, including memory storage. I'd like to read a bit from another article by Susan Blackmore. This one is called Alien Abduction, and the subject of false memory is brought up because the topic of alien abduction is, quote, unfortunately complicated by the fact that some, though not all, abductees only recall their experiences under hypnosis. This naturally raises accusations of FMS, or false memory syndrome, that the hypnotists themselves have implanted the ideas and created memories for things that never happened. There is much hype and misunderstanding around the concept of false memory. False memory is not something completely different from true memory. Indeed, to some extent, you could say that all memories are false. There is no tape recorder in the brain. Rather, research shows that we used stored information to reconstruct plausible accounts of past events. When we retell those events, it is easy to recall our own retelling more clearly than the original experience, even if we've exaggerated it a bit along the way. How then can we decide which memories are real and which imagined? There is no magic way to the right answer, and some theorists think it just depends on how readily available an image is. If it is clear and detailed and easy to bring to mind, it will be remembered as real. When memory is seen this way, the phenomena of false memory seems less bizarre. Take recent experiments by Elizabeth Loftus, a psychologist from Seattle, Washington. She wanted to bring false memory research from the comparative sterility of laboratory events to genuine emotional ones. She invited people into her lab and chose to implant in them the memory of being lost in a shopping mall as a young child. The subjects had never actually been lost this way, as far as anyone knew, but their relatives took part by reminding them of the event. Afterwards, the unsuspecting subjects remembered the events clearly, and even when Loftus tried to debrief them, some remained convinced that it had actually happened. This should not unduly surprise us. Do we really remember that time on the beach when we were six, or did we just invent it from the photo in the family album? 
we shall never know. And we are at liberty to convince ourselves that our memories are accurate until we see laboratory demonstrations like this when we know for sure that they are not. This actually came up for me recently. I brought up to my family a memory that I have that I can't tell if it's real or not. My cousin and I are almost the same age and I have this very specific vivid memory of being in her classroom at her school one day, sometime between late elementary and middle school. I remember sitting at a desk and just being a part of her class, as I would my own, but we didn't go to the same school, or even the same district, so why would I be in her classroom? It doesn't really make sense, but I have this picture-perfect memory. I remember walking in the halls between classes as well and all, you know, the hubbub of people in the hallways going this way and that. I told my mom, cousin, and aunt about this the other day and they were just as puzzled. None of them remembered it or had any explanation. So it probably didn't happen and maybe it was a dream, but it's still so strange how I can keep this in my mind all this time and why it's there in the first place. There's also something to be said about the power of suggestion. Let's read a few comments under this sewer elf story. Murky600 said, Adult's suggestion plus strong, literally childlike imagination can equal interesting visions. I'm happy to know I wasn't the only one to have had these as a kid. When I was little, I heard my mother complaining about the draft coming out from under the door. I didn't know what a draft was, and I must have misheard what she said. I thought she said giraffe, as in, there's a giraffe coming from under the door. So I sat down and waited to see a giraffe come sliding out from under the door. Eventually, I did. I saw a paper-thin 2D giraffe slide out from under the door, like a printout. It flew up and faded away. I ran and told my mother, who probably thought I was joking or being her usual half-crazy kid. Not the first time. I went back and watched other animals slide out from under the door. Reading other commenters remembering their similar experiences tells me that my experience wasn't an outlier. As kids, we have imaginations that produce daylight hallucinations. To this comment, President Calhoun says, that's for sure. When I was about five, my cousin was at our house playing with a jack-in-the-box. We later found out that she had the flu. My older sister, who was about eight or nine, said that the jack-in-the-box was probably crawling with germs, and she took it and set it out in the utility room. I clearly remember going out for a look and seeing that the box was indeed crawling with hundreds of tiny bugs. They were as real as could be, in my mind. Bran says, this reminds me of when I was a kid, and on our playground there were what people kept telling me were prairie dog holes, and I sat there watching one, not knowing what prairie dogs look like. I assumed they were small pink little poodles or something. Well, then out pops a pink little poodle from the hole, sees me, and disappears back down the hole. I chalk it up to wild imagination, but to me as a five-year-old, it was a real experience. I bring these comments up not only because I find them to be very interesting, but because in the original story we read, the if your mind has played tricks on you, or if this was a genuine experience. Either way, I find this to be a very compelling story. It just has such interesting visuals. Here's a bit more that they elaborate on in the comments. The inside of the sewer looked as nothing I have ever seen inside another sewer. It was very, very deep and it looked almost like a chamber of some sort with bright light and a table at which the man sat. There was no dirt or anything else that you would expect to see in a sewer. Of course, another detail that piqued my interest was at the very close of their story. They said that this was the second strangest thing to happen to them. And come on, you can't just say something like that and then leave us hanging. Luckily, someone in the comments addressed this, and the OP gave their account of the strangest thing to have happened to them. I'll read it for you now. It happened while I was in the countryside. I live in Eastern Europe. We had a house with a lot of terrain around it. There were more yards separated by fences. The last yard was pretty far away from the house, and because of all the trees and vines, you almost couldn't see it anymore. It was also separated from the others by a streamlet, over which went a little bridge. I wasn't allowed to go there when I was younger, since it was usual for wild boars or foxes to come and eat the rotten apples. That yard was next to the forest. However, 
One summer, I was helping my grandma, and I had to pick up the apples and pears from the ground. I was pretty focused on finding apples and also a little scared all alone back there. I was around 10 at this time. There were many sounds. The water flowing, the birds, some crickets singing. However, through all the sounds, there was another one, which I didn't really mind at first, but then it became louder and louder. It was like something was going through the bushes behind me, but whenever I turned around, nothing was moving. I became even more scared, and I froze in my tracks. I was just turning around, analyzing everything around me. I was looking for a fox, even though it also could have just been a cat. However, as I was looking around, I suddenly saw a big snake rising from the grass and staring right at me. And I kid you not, he was golden, completely golden, with a head at least as big as my fist. I didn't wait a second and I started screaming for my grandma at the top of my lungs, and I ran as fast as I could without looking back. My grandpa went with an axe afterwards, searching the area, but he didn't find anything. Neither me nor anyone else ever saw it again. I looked up different types of snakes, and I never found anything like what I saw. The closest was some water snake from China, but smaller, and I don't know how it could have been here in Europe. So, this too is another strange childhood experience. There is another giant snake story in an older video I did. That's a good one too. Giant snake is in the title of the video if you're interested to hear it. I don't think we can say for certain why children have more supernatural experiences, although there are a variety of beliefs and theories and possible explanations. And of course, it's very possible that not every strange thing that a child experiences is a true paranormal experience, but I also don't think that every perceived paranormal event experienced as a child are just instances of pareidolia and vivid imaginations. Some things are just too complex and involved to be a simple misconception. I, myself, had the majority of my own personal experiences in childhood as well. Like I said in the beginning, I proposed some speculation and analysis on these accounts we read tonight for the sake of critical thinking and thought-provoking discussion. I am in no way seeking to invalidate these stories. However, I do think if you are face-to-face -face with an individual and they decide to share their story with you about a genuine experience, unless they invite analysis, it's probably best just to take in their story and reserve judgment for yourself. Hopefully you enjoyed these stories tonight and the topic at hand. Please let me know if you have had your own experience you'd like to share. I'm always, always grateful and excited to hear other people's stories. Clearly, it's my absolute favorite thing in life, is to hear an interesting and strange story. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight, and I will see you next time.